Hello everyone, I'm David Guerrero and welcome back to another video here on Many Ways Films. On the last video I talked to you about how I rig up my Seacam E2, the items and the accessories that I use to rig up my camera, also how I do it. And in the video of today I'm gonna talk to you about my personal experience with the Seacam E2. Before making any review, before talking about cameras or anything that I own or I take video with or any equipment that I use, I like to take some time to really test it, to really use it, get my hands on it so I can give you a nice review, more accurate and not just a one day, two, three days of use. So I've been using this camera for a couple weeks already, which is not a lot of time. There's many things that I don't know about this camera. Don't take this review as a overall, in total, full review. Have it just as someone that has never had a cinema camera, has worked with DSLRs, recently with mirrorless cameras. First of all, I wanna talk about the image quality. The image quality on this camera, it's, I don't know if it's the best I've seen, and I don't wanna say that, but it's the one that I have enjoyed the most. I don't know what it is, but just looking at the image on this camera, it's just amazing. I really like it, I enjoy it. Even that you have options to sharpen your image in camera on low, medium, and high, which I just have it on low or medium. Just see for yourself how good the image quality on this camera is. You're gonna enjoy it so much. The other thing I wanna talk about is the different options you have on recording. Uh, H.265, H.264, ProRes options. If you're not familiar with them, it's okay. I wasn't either. I'm not the best person to talk to you about them right now, maybe in the future. What I can tell is that these profiles are different levels or different options of compression for your video so the one that i'm using right now it's actually it's prores 422 proxy i want to talk about the slow motion in this camera you can go up to 160 frames uh, on 4k which is really cool i usually go between 120 and 150 Something really cool that I haven't been able to do with a DSLR or a mirrorless camera is to be able to record at 23.976, something like that, you know, 24 frames per second, and then being able to have your shutter speed at 48 uh, shutter speed. And that's something really nice. It's not a huge difference, but just having the option, I think it's pretty cool. The mobility in this camera, I'm gonna be totally honest. It depends on you and it depends on what you're doing. Uh, using this camera as you would carry your DSLR or your mirrorless camera, it's gonna be something different. It's not something it'll be pretty comfortable to be carrying around. Maybe as I have it set it up right now, it's not the most comfortable, but it's not terrible. It's not annoying, but it's not as easy as my C6 to just carry around. So also have that in mind and i don't know what i'm doing so much with my hands sorry about that no that's pretty distracting i think having the option to rig up this camera how you want there's tons of options that uh, you can put many different things many kinds of handles monitors top handles beam mounts and stuff like that i think that's pretty cool and it'll help you to get more on a cinema uh, style camera or setup with this kind of camera. So do not make this a huge video. I just want you to know I'm pretty happy with the Seacam E2. It's a great camera. I think the image quality from the C6, the Nikon mirrorless C6 and the Seacam, it's pretty similar. But when you go up to 120 frames even 60 frames in 4k having these different profiles option even having options on your image if you want it flat if you want rec 709 i'm pretty sure if you want to go to the filmmaking cinema path this is a camera that you're gonna enjoy a lot so there you guys have it this is my review if you can say about this camera i'm gonna talk about this camera a little bit more on the future let me use it for a couple 
more weeks or maybe a couple months and seeing if I find anything that I don't like about this camera there's always something that is not really good for example that I can just record H.265 to go in slow motion I hate that but I bet I'll find other things that I'll enjoy with this camera also don't forget to subscribe to this channel i'm really grateful for the people that have been watching these videos giving the thumbs up leaving your comments here i really appreciate those it just uh, makes my day it's something really cool and really nice to see how this camera grows how this camera how this channel grows little by little so thank you guys for all of you that have been subscribing i won't let you down i'll keep posting more cool videos and i'll see you on the next one